We're going to turn now to former independent counsel Kenneth Starr, who's back in the news today because he's being named the new president of Baylor University. It's the same day a new book is out on the history of his investigation of the Monica Lewinsky scandal and the impeachment of President Clinton. And Kenneth Starr joins us now from Waco, Texas. Uh, good morning, Judge Starr. And I want to get to that book in a second. But first, congratulations on the appointment as president of Baylor. This is a bit of a homecoming for you, right? Thank you, George. It sure is. Uh, I'm a fifth generation uh, Texan. I left the great state of Texas at the uh, age of 18. So a few decades later, it's, it's great to be coming back and especially to Baylor University, which uh, has a great, great tradition, older than the state of Texas itself in 1845. So it's great to be coming home. Older than the state of Texas. Hey, well, this seems like a long time ago as well, but the, the, the whole hmm. investigation of President Clinton and the Monica Lewinsky affair is back in the news this morning because of this new book, The Death of American Virtue. The author, Professor Ken Gorm Gormley, seems to admire you personally. It certainly comes across in the book, but he also comes to the conclusion that you were unsuited for this job of independent prosecutor professionally and that it was a mistake for you to take on the Lewinsky matter. What do you think of that conclusion? Well, Ken is a very uh, astute observer. He's actually uh, the dean, the interim dean of the Duquesne Law School in Pittsburgh. Uh, he's a great man. Uh, he's a great scholar. I have great admiration for him. He did the most wonderful biography of Archibald Cox, who's an iconic figure in American uh, law and a great uh, American uh, hero. Uh, and I certainly accept uh, criticisms uh, from very thoughtful people, and Ken uh, is one of them. Uh, but I will say I do respectfully disagree with some of his uh, conclusions, but this is one of those things, George, where reasonable minds uh, can differ, but I have great respect for him and his opinions. The most serious charge seems to be the, the, his, his conclusions about the questioning of Monica Lewinsky, the so-called brace of Monica Lewinsky, and he talks about a, a Justice Department investigation that was led by Joanne Harris, and she seems to take great issue with the fact uh, that Monica Lewinsky was not allowed to call her lawyer, was dissuaded from calling her lawyer during the questioning. She said in the book, I wouldn't have touched her, Lewinsky, with a 10-foot pole. The minute she says, can I call my lawyer, you stop. And when she says it for the sixth or seventh time, you really stop. Why wasn't she allowed to call her well, lawyer? Well, again, George, these are uh, issues from the past, and again, you have uh, a very thoughtful examination by Ken uh, Gormley and uh, you know there was a very unhappy uh, chapter in the nation's history and of course specific tactics can be questioned and, and should be questioned. Uh, power should be uh, uh, should be accounted for and the use of power should be accounted for. Uh, so uh, I accept thoughtful uh, thoughtful criticisms uh, and I think Ken's uh, book is a, is a useful service uh, to to the country. Do you think you'll ever write about it? I don't think so, George. Uh, I think that the uh, Congress of the United States uh, was wise in allowing the independent counsel statute to expire. But one of the provisions of the independent counsel statute was that the independent counsel should, uh, should issue a report, whether uh, prosecution is, is brought or, or not. Uh, and I think the American public from 10 years ago probably had all the reports that they, that they wanted. Uh, I've been very happy to move on in professional life, to be called to serve at Pepperdine University School of Law, now to be called to uh, Baylor University to serve as its uh, president. And so uh, to coin a phrase, uh, move on. And, uh, and I'm delighted to have uh, moved on. I was able to do uh, a book uh, after I left the investigation on the Supreme Court of the United States, which is part of my true professional love. And now to be coming to Baylor is just a great, great uh, opportunity for me and a great blessing. What do you hope to do at Baylor? Well, Baylor has a mighty tradition and has gone through a process of uh, introspection and examination to move really to the next uh, level. Uh, it is a research university. It is moving upward uh, in terms of scholarship and the like. At the same time, it is uh, focused on the integration of faith and learning and will have a very, I think, important voice in American and already does in American uh, higher education and to look holistically at the human condition and to really serve as a source of inspiration and really a lighthouse and a beacon as it has for the many, many years, in fact, over 150 years since its founding in 1845. So I stand on a long line of uh, very distinguished uh, individuals. I'm humble 
humbled by that. It's a great institution. I hope to be able to serve it to the best of my ability. Finally, sir, you say in this book by Ken Gorman that if you were running to President Clinton, you would say to him, I'm sorry that it all happened. Oh, I am. I, absolutely. Who uh, is not sorrowful for the entire uh, chapter uh, in American history? But the law is the law, uh, and no one is above the law. And it was the decision, and it was an unhappy decision, but it was the right decision of Attorney General Reno when she saw the facts, the possibility, the possibility that federal crimes may have been committed. Yes, in this very unhappy set of circumstances, the matter had to be investigated because in our country, no one is above the law. Okay, well, Judge Starr, thanks very much for your time this morning, and good luck at Baylor. Thanks so much, George. Good to talk to you.